Forget about that Jewish girl and this drink. She does not want to see you. Zabalowski, welcome to the revolution. Hi there. Laura, what's Is going on? I'm good. Not much. <laughs> Not much. Wait, what's up with you? Uh, like, you know. Huh. Uh, we just, made it. Yeah, there. That's good to see. Uh, just in rainy and kind of snowy and cold Chicago. So. Oh wow, you're up there. Yeah, it's it's still pretty warm here in the south. I have to say. Oh, where are you at? I am in Georgia. Oh, so. okay. Well, that's not bad. Are you filming something out there or just uh, <laughs> hanging out there with family or something? Uh, we actually moved here a couple of years ago, but we were before pre-pandemic days, mm -hmm. the before four times, I guess we were kind of going back and forth from LA to Atlanta a little bit more. But since this year, it's pretty much been just Atlanta. And there hasn't really... Like things are definitely opening back up, but I haven't worked on anything. So mm -hmm. just sort of been promoting this movie. And there you go. At least you're you're doing something. Well, that's good. Promoting a movie. That's a positive thing. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh, I like that chair. Does it, does it say your name on it? By the way, I was just curious. Uh, the chair you're sitting on. The chair? Oh yes, it does. It was. Oh, that's awesome. Is that from the set? <laughs> It's from, uh, yeah, it's from Nancy Drew. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> let me steal it. I was that's like, I have cool. to take this. Yeah, you got to take mine from Shameless. So that was a mistake. We were on there for like two years and you didn't even get anything out of it? No. Well, they told me to take the chair and I was like, <laughs> I don't need this. I'm too cool. I don't need my name on a chair. And then like <laughs> later on, I'm like 29. I was like, I want this chair now. <laughs> Yep, there you go. Well, you learned, right? <laughs> Experience. <laughs> exactly. So this movie surprised me because I didn't know initially it would be a musical. And there you, there it goes, singing and, and everything. So uh, curious, how did, how did you come about this role? And, uh, you know, you have an accent, you're singing. There's a lot of things, moving parts going on there. What, what attracted you about it and kind of how did you come about it? Well, um, it's kind of a mixture of like, I think Robert Tui saw, like Rob ended up seeing me on um, Shameless years ago and he really liked that performance. And then his daughter met me at like an improv class. Oh, no way. And so she was like, <laughs> well, she's really nice, apparently, you know, and I guess until I'm tired. I don't think I'm very nice when I'm tired, neither does my I don't husband. think anyone but is. They were, hey. but that's okay. I was being nice. And so they gave me, um, and so he ended up, it turned out we were like at the same management company and Robert just set, was seeing if I was available. And I was kind of shocked, honestly, because usually with the Shameless and everything, I'll just get these like kind of wayward teenager roles offered to me, you know? Yeah, and yeah. So like positive and lighthearted. Well, sometimes lighthearted, sometimes it's it's kind of dark in the film but nothing's like overbearingly dark you know mm -hmm. I was able to watch it with my grandmother so that was good well I mean maybe she was kind of in the know about those times too right maybe or heard of stories about it that was like her mother you know was in that time I, I mean she was born in 1933 so okay yeah she's it she it's like right before she came along I guess Interesting. Well, yeah, you always get those stories, you know, and recollection. Someone down the line has heard them or, or been somewhat part of them. You know, everyone's got kind of an immigrant story in this country. You know, we all come from them at some point, you know, down the family tree. Absolutely. So now, I'm first I generation. Mean, that was, too. That's true. We do have a lot of first generation immigrants here as well. It's just like um, me. Yeah, we always. <laughs> You are. Where are you from originally? Uh, so uh, I actually, Poland. My mom was oh, wow. born in Poland. Yeah. And I grew up there as a kid. I was born in Chicago, but as a kid, we moved out there and I spent a lot of my childhood there. So uh, kind of the Eastern European theme of it. I'm like, yeah, I understand that, Like, you know, those people and all that. So that was kind of cool. No, that's really cool because, I mean, part of it is that we just don't pay a lot of attention to, like, that part of history in America, but it really formed a lot of how people actually got to the States 
and got over here was all of the transition and confusion that was like with the, um, you know, obviously the Bolsheviks are the main ones they talk about. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but there, you know, there was just a lot of like exploiting of people and religions and um, a lot of fear at that time. And people came over here hoping for a better life. And in a lot of cases, the immigrants weren't treated as if they were equal. And it kind of seems to, uh, re it, it seems like we, we seem to have a similar reoccurring theme, you know, where right. even this past four years, we've been having questions about how we're supposed to pay immigrants and who's here legally and who's not and all that. Yeah, no so, question. The kind of history keeps on going in, in different versions, variations. I heard from my grandfather about the Bolsheviks. He fought, he fought in that war. So um, for him, it was like firsthand experiences. I remember as a little kid hearing about the Bolsheviks. I'm like, I don't know what they are, but I, I heard a lot about them. Uh, so obviously he, he was in Eastern Europe uh, out there. So it was firsthand knowledge. So that was kind of a cool trip for me, memory lane. Uh, thinking of my grandfather's stories and just knowing that a lot of Eastern Europeans came to this country, like even if you trace my family, you know, um, generationally too, you know, they came to work in factories, either in cities like Pittsburgh or, or New York or Chicago, you know, where they had big factories and they would work these jobs, these okay. hard jobs, these labor intensive jobs. That's all very true, especially early in the 1900s. Wow. Well, that's, I mean, because a lot of my family pretty much came from here. I have one great grandma that came from Spain, but not too much of a, like, not too hard, just other than the fact that they didn't like her accent, you know, here. But, um, you know, just, it's just interesting how much has been put at stake and how easy, how quickly, you know, I never even heard of this, uh, knew about Winnipeg or any of this stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, it, like, getting ready for this role was a lot of me like trying to look at the history and really figure out you know how she would have even gotten here which is probably on a ship where there's just like you like sleep on a bench basically you know right. yeah yeah bad conditions and, for sure and we're no planes we're talking about ships that would take like months to get over you know like it was yeah, like a if long you had a journey. good wind yeah, yeah exactly. if the wind was going to blow <laughs> so Seriously. it was crazy yeah, totally. It, it gives you perspective on life that it wasn't that far removed. We're not talking about like hundreds of years ago. This was like in the 1900s, early 1900s, a lot of this stuff happened. So it, it's, we can trace back some relatives to those times, which is really interesting in, in that sense. You know, I don't feel like a lot of these stories are being told in, in that essence, you know, and there's so many stories to be told, but we don't see a lot of films, I guess, uh, on that side of history too. It's true. So I'm really glad Danny went there with this and his grandparents, because I guess they're also uh, part Catholic, part Jewish, you know, somebody, somebody married somebody's daughter, didn't want to marry you know? <laughs> yeah, Right, but Or we're arranged or we're told kind of, uh, you know, brought into these relationships like, hey, you're going to marry this person because we're friends or whatnot. Exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> that part of the storyline is really interesting, just seeing people falling in love and being able to make their own decisions in Canada, where, I mean, it is still, like, more on the, like, imperial side of things, I guess, and they're still under, they're still, like, uh, connected with Great Britain, but still, people are, like, really hungry for democracy and have their own voice, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I liked how this was a kind of a tale of like, uh, like you mentioned, uh, like romance and kind of real life, you know, history and issues in that. But you always need a little bit of romance in every movie, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just a given. Well, I think when I started to like, because as you start to do the movie, you start reading the script like yeah. on a regular basis. And like, I just started to realize like, well, this is like the part of the movie that's kind of the little lightness in it. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, everybody else is under so much stress, which is kind of the problem with having like teenagers <laughs> in situations like this is sometimes they don't quite understand the stakes. Like, um, like Mike Sokolowski, he's got to deal with his parent is the rest of his family is trying to get to, um, to Canada and get away from the Bolsheviks. You've got, uh, Moishka, who's like her, my brother, my older brother in it. And mm -hmm. Both of those characters are based on real people. Like Moishka was a Jewish writer that was like considered very, uh, 
he was like an extreme, you know, almost like called a terrorist sometimes, you know, with the way that he would write about. Yeah, like um, an old school what, liberal probably. Right. And mm -hmm. so they were always thinking that, um, I can't, extremist, they're calling him an extremist yeah. a lot of the times. But, um, but yeah, just, and then you've got like Stefan and <laughs> Rebecca who are very passionate and they're not wrong in their thinking. They're just uh, very like, in, like presumptive that they can make the, the, that it can work out. Mm -hmm. So when you have to juggle singing potentially and an accent, how difficult has that become for you? How, how did you, how did you make that work in, in a sense? Cause you, you're dealing with different aspects of uh, both are challenging to kind of bring into just on top of the acting itself. Well, I had one friend that's uh, Polish that is actually from Ontario. So okay. sometimes I would like kind of ask her when I was like two weeks before I had to leave, I'd be like, what is, like, how would your mom say this? And I would just uh -huh. listen to her, talk to her mom on the phone. Cause she sounded like she was angry all the time. And she's like, no, we're not angry. <laughs> this we're is not so angry. true. But her face looked angry. Like, you know, like it seems like they're mad. And she's like, no, this is just how we're talking. She's very stubborn. Oh, this is, so, I can relate to this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I bet. It's just a nat natural way of, of how, like, at least in my sense, Polish people do it. My mother does that. It's it's like on the outside, like, wow, <laughs> you're like, are they maybe like, no, they're perfectly normal. But it's just like this impassioned, I guess it's like this impassioned sense that they have. It is. Yeah. It's really awesome. But um, so it started that way. And then as we filmed, I just kept being like, Danny, like, because I would have like nightmares that people would be like, she, the American girl just ruined it with her bad accent, you know, <laughs> like, um, but Danny was like, no, it's fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to, it's not distracting. He's like, if it was distracting, I would tell you because he's been working on this for like over a decade now. Wow. So I know he's very happy to see it actually go to American cinemas and all that stuff and see it take off because he's just nurtured it, but he really wanted, he's just taking it upon himself to make sure that this story gets told. That's right. I got to ask you about your run on Shameless. You had a really, I love the show and it was so fun. You were part of the the original, uh, you know, beginnings of the show. I, they're going into what? Like in, a, in about a week or two, they're going to 11th. It's insane for a show to be. I know. Getting and into they say it's season. really the end of it. I'm like, I can't believe it. But I, you know, Does I, think, like I, mean, I believe it, but you know. Does the, it feel like, like forever? The spirit of the Gallagher will live on. <laughs> yeah, in some ways, they certainly <laughs> will. How do how does it feel now, looking back, at being kind of part of the the incarnation of it? Did you ever think it would last this long? And and now, kind of looking back, being part of it and and being you know you know a big big part of the show when it started. Uh, how do you feel, kind of looking back at your experience on it? Do you still stay uh, in touch with any of the cast? Tell me, kind of about your experience. I mean, I. It seems like like we'll randomly like I'll get to talk to Shinola or uh, and she you know plays Veronica on there mm -hmm. and then um, you know like I one person that I did know was Isaiah I think that's his last like now that I've been so thrown out of you know I haven't been there but like the late like I never knew the older Liam and I met him just out of happenstance you know and him mm -hmm. and his mom so I would see him a while. And I used to like text a little bit with Emmy, you know, I think she's gotten really busy, like wanting to produce more and kind of start her own family life. So, um, but you know, just a little bit, you know, just a little bit of keeping in touch with people. But uh, I think everybody's just been, and Emma Kenny, like, but people have been really busy. So it's like, it's not like, once you're off the set, I feel like things kind of, you know, people just it's like your old high school or something you know yeah it's like yeah. you kind of talk but not too much mm -hmm. do you still watch the show or follow it um i have kept up with a little part of it i need to get back on 10 um <laughs> because some of the stuff that happens to debbie i'm like what did y'all do because to me <laughs> she's still like 11 years old even right. though i've talked to her and i know she's like can like do adult things and buy own a house and but all this stuff weird, and I'm like, right I still want to like pay protective over her but I mean Emma Kenny's just done a really 
she's had a really cool career. I mean, she's got a lot, a lot going on. She's got the Connor. She's got Shameless. Like we're gonna see a lot of that girl. That's right. Well, I've been a fan of your work, so it's cool to see you again. I'm obviously in the rings and so many uh, shows over yeah. the years. Shameless. I, I've been kind of following your own career, and you've grew, grown too, and you know, and matured over the years too. So that's kind of cool to to always see that on screen, you know, and and see you do different roles. So uh, I'm looking forward for more from you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That means that means a lot. So absolutely. By the way, I, I love the combo of the blue shirt and with your eyes in that light. It, it looks great. I mean, that, that's that's a great look for thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Because I just threw this on. I was like, if you look up, the rest of my body is like jeans and like muck boots because we've been like getting ready for Thanksgiving. I was like, oh, I should like, you know. And even as we speak, I have pets just coming in and out. It's like a parade here. I'm oh, cool. Like, but if yeah. I close the door, Dogs? they'll just cry. Well, here's, here's this one. Here's Luna. Oh, what a cutie. Wow. Hey, hi. Yes. But if her. I close the door on them, instead of just coming in and out, they'll like cry at the door. So. Hey, they're, they're, they're hey. welcome anytime <laughs> on, on, on this. Should have, should have brought them on the other chair, you know? Right. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I'm glad we got to catch up and talk and, and looking forward to talking to you again down the road and, and, you know, for the next project for you too. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good Thanksgiving with the family and stay safe and healthy during these times because it's, it's crazy out there. You too. You too. Bye, Laura. Bye. The more we do nothing, the more nothing changes.